this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, November the 21st, 2018. And Vegas, I'm going to hand it right over to you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. And what a day today was. Today we're going to talk about ABIL. We're going to talk about QD, CANF, RSLS, and EARS. So I hope you guys are all listening. So the first one's going to be ABIL. And uh, that ran because the company announced that they're entering a purchase, uh, stock purchase agreement. It's an Israeli ticker. And uh, Israeli tickers were on fire today. Uh, But basically, uh, what's happened here under the purchase agreement, uh, subject to the company's due diligence, obviously, um, they've agreed to purchase um, all the issued and outstanding shares of the supplier in consideration of 354,000 shares, which is equal to about a million dollars. And uh, this is great. And uh, we should see a move on the stock. And you know what? That's exactly what happened today. And uh, if the acquisition is completed, which it will be, the company will incur additional operating expense of about $750,000. So um, that's, uh, you know, good to know. And they filed a report on this of 6K with a more detailed summary if people are interested to read that. But Jim, tell us about this chart because the news triggered major action yep in the stock sure enough and this is a yearly chart this is kind of spontaneous little stock it likes to run up and pull right back and run up and pull back and so we hit a bottom kind of here at 279 yesterday and then right out of the gate it opened up let me see here we'll bring us to a daily popped right out of the gate at 275 we had a golden cross right here you see that there and she went ahead and bounced up and respected that 50 SMA until she had that breakout here at 650 something. So we called the pullback. Pullback came, hit my support around 516, which I had from a previous previous uh, level earlier, right in here. That's where I called it at, and it went ahead and bounced back up. And then again, respectful the 50 day SMA, and then we started seeing that 50 drop. And when that happened. I was letting Vegas know it's time to go ahead and exit. And so we let the room know that we're getting out. It pulled back. It pulled back a couple times, bounced up just a little bit, and then tested it a couple times and pulled back to this support level here at 582. And then again, it had another good run, and the run lasted a good hour and a half, two hours. And then we had that... It hit coming, started coming down, hit that 200. So that's when I started noticing the volatility, and it dropped on down, and it's been selling off after hours. And now we're up here at the 50 SMA. So this is able. I want you to come in Friday thinking maybe it'll pull back a little bit, but I have a lot of respect for this stock right now. We opened up at 275. We closed, so you know we closed at 275, and it ran all the way up to eight bucks. We expected some kind of pullback, and that's what happened. So keep Abel on watch, and we'll try to keep it in play next week. Vegas? Okay, that's great. I'm definitely going to have that on my watch list. Oh, yeah. Um, you did well today on it. One, oh, yeah. We did very well on that. Scalped it up. Scalped, I think I even had people tell me they scalped it like 15 times. <laughs> So you know what? You got to take the money when it's presented because you know we had days earlier this week where it was a bit slow. Uh, so you have to try to make it, you know, on the days where there's a lot of action. So on to the next one, which is QD, and sounds like a cutie. It's QD called Cutie and Ink. This is a China company, and this one had a nice run today. And um, the reason it did is they had very good earnings. Um, the results on this one in pre-market, the stock was up 11%. They actually uh, beat the consensus estimate after the company did reaffirm uh, their earnings guidance for the year. Uh, the adjusted earnings was $0.32. Cents. It actually beat the Mark, uh, Wall Street estimates by about $0.02. Cents. And that's what's key. You have to beat estimates from Wall Street. I mean, you could have earnings that exceed, but if it doesn't beat the estimates on Wall Street, stock sometimes just doesn't move. People go, oh, they beat earnings. Why isn't the stock moving? Well, because sometimes it didn't beat the estimates on the street. 
and uh, therefore stock doesn't move. But in this case, uh, had a nice uh, run. I'll let Jim talk about that in a second. But this company is very involved in doing loans, and uh, they had very good revenue on uh, their loan book, which increased 18%, which is great. And their total revenue is up 33% from a year ago. That was driven by the Dubai auto business and the loan facility income. So that's very good. Uh, so we took an interest in the stock today at around 525, a little bit late, so into ABIL, but uh, definitely liked this as a swing trade. Uh, some people scalped it to about $6. It had a breakout later in the day. Uh, but certainly people are swing trading this for a continuation. I'm going to turn it over to Jim now and talk about that. Yeah, as she said, sales increased over 32%, 33% over a year. So that's excellent. Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> so here's the year chart on Q, uh, QD. We run up to the 50 SMA today at 602. We, I mean, this is a beautiful run today from 475 up to to uh, 602 where that 50 at 100 SMA is and you see the I was telling Vegas I said this thing was up there at 19 bucks at the beginning of last year at this time last year and we had another little resistance right around here around 17 so I've played this before but it's been a while and it's pulled back these red lines is where I played it last time so we went down here to a bottom of four bucks last month so let's keep QD on watch. We're liking it. That sales increase really gave it a boost today. I always say look for a pullback before every entry. And this is QD. And the next one we're going to talk about, Vegas, is CANF. Yes. So CANF, this is another, you know, Israeli company in Peta Tikva. Love that company. Um, haven't seen this stock move in quite some time, but you know, this company is called CanFit Biopharma and they're a biotech company and they've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline and they're actually looking to work on a drug that will address cancer, which really specifically for liver and inflammatory diseases. You know, they had news also recently that they brought on a new, uh, Professor Lovett, who is the founder of the cancer program at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in beautiful state of New York City. And uh, he's joined them uh, to uh, put, be part of the board and uh, give them some, obviously, uh, support and uh, assistance in their medical research. So they're very thrilled to have him on the board. The other thing, too, is that the weekly chart's great. Jim's going to talk about that in a second. But I do want to mention that this stock is in a phase two liver study. And they're looking to disclose results sometime in the first quarter of 2019. So I think, you know, this stock should be on a watch, not just for this fact that it's a beautiful chart for a weekly setup for a swing, but as things evolve and we get closer to, obviously, 2019, in anticipation of the clinical trial results, uh, we'd love to hear uh, what's going to come out of this, uh, you know, with the trials that they've been doing. And, you know, I've talked, you know, before, too, that phase two is one of the most expensive phases. So uh, definitely uh, interested in hearing what's going to happen with this uh, drug that they're working on called uh, Nemodenosin. So this is a small oral drug that uh, the individual would take. And uh, hopefully we'll hear some really good results. This would be great news for people that are suffering uh, with this uh, type of cancer. So Jim, what do you can see on the chart there? Well, I, I sure like what it does. I see on the chart that we had a, we've had a pretty good run in the last month. We've come from a bottom of 122 and we ran all the way up today to 173. Today was an excellent run from 140 up to 173. We have a year high of 275, which I would probably put that right around 253 for that maybe resistance if we were going to go long, long on this thing. So our next, and we almost hit our resistance today at 175, and that was filling in a gap from, from 160 up to 175 and we had a high of around 173 so it pulled back we're at 161 
I have a low, low bottom at this at 115, which I don't think we're going to see at all. If it pulls back any, it might pull back to this 200 SMA at 137. So as I pull up the day chart, we had this wonderful breakout. I don't, I didn't catch it. I heard it come popping on the scanner, and then it was too late. It ran up real fast, and then it pulled back. And once it pulled back and consolidated, it bounced up again to that resistance at 165. We pulled back and hit the 50, and there we are again. We had a breakout at 173. So let's keep this stock on watch. I like it. Um, I, I've been following it for a while. I just didn't catch this last last run here. Um, so keep CANF on watch. And the next one we're going to talk about is RSLS. And I'm going to ask Vegas to give her her okay. show about it. Okay, so RSLS, uh, as you guys know, they did a 1 to 140 uh, stock uh, split, uh, uh, and uh, that was not fun. Um, that was happened on November the 8th. So I think that, um, you know, it's kind of towards the bottom here. It's pulled back. Uh, I have an active swing trade on this, really looking for this to reverse uh, back towards the $2 range, potentially. And uh, waiting for, you know, a future PR on this in the very near future, to kind of confirm that uh, they're meeting compliance. So um, that's kind of where I'm seeing this. Um, also, Jim can probably tell you a little more what he sees on this chart, but uh, certainly um, it's had, you know, some support here, very low support. I believe around the 129 zone we were looking at, but definitely one for, you know, a reversal play. All right, RSLS. I'm going to pull up the year's chart on it. Now, I think this might be a little clustered up, but we'll see right here. No, not too bad. So we had a year high, and then I can't go by any of these numbers here because it's probably had a bunch of splits. So I can't really give you an idea of, of, of how the uh, year chart looks, but I do can tell you that 129 is the 50 SMA. And you got, so let's start from there. Let's bring it up to a 20 day, one hour. And you see, I've got this all lined up, so I'm going to erase all these lines real fast because it probably should have done it sooner. And we'll get a clearer picture on this thing. So I've got a support right now at around 122. I'm going to magnify this up a little bit. Got a little resistance right here, right around 137. Once it hits that, we could probably bring it up to this level right here, right around 143, and then try to get a high of 152. Now, this 152 is very important. If we break that 152, we can bring it up to 164. So this is RSLS. We're at a bottom. The low was 105 last yesterday. So let's see if we can get a play on this stock. And RSLS is the one. Okay, and then I hope uh, you guys are listening and have your ears on. Um, so I just want to mention ears, uh, just here after hours, had an amended uh, 13G filing. So looks like here that the um, Mayor Thomas, who is the CEO, shows a 27.1% stake in ears. Oh. So. This is quite interesting, okay? So this is an amended 13D. So there, he did have ownership, obviously, but he's increased his stake. So that's interesting. So I think we could probably see some action on ears, if not after hours, because, you know, people are buying. Um, you know, maybe definitely see some action maybe on Friday. So, Jim, what can you tell us about the chart, especially the fact that, you know, not everyone has after hours access can they look to expect if they are to consider uh, uh, trading ears? Okay, well, here's ears. I'm going to pull up the one-year chart. And I always like to pull that up first just to get an idea of what we're looking at. And like everything else, it's pulled back, and we're at a bottom here. We had a bottom earlier at, at 23 cents, and it's been about oh, four or five months ago. And we had a great run up to the 50, up to the 200 SMA, and it pulled back and hovered around these 50 and the 100. So I'm going to magnify this up to a 20-day. 
and we can got to get a better picture of how we're going to how we're going to tackle this. So we know support was right around 60 cents. That's where it broke out today, and it surpassed the moving averages and went up to about 75. Well, I'm looking at a 20-day chart, and that looks pretty much maybe the second resistance. So we got a couple more we can climb up here. I got a long on this thing at 85, 86 cents. It can run to 87. So keep that in mind. And with a 20-day high of about a dollar, a little under a dollar. So let's see if we can get a pullback on this thing to 68 cents. If it pulls back to 68, I think it'll go ahead and bounce on and move on up. So this is ears. This is one that we've kept on watch. I alerted it in the room earlier today at 61 cents. And just brought it up, you know, because it's one we've been watching. And if I'd had any sense, I'd have probably jumped in that. But it ran up to 74 or something after hours. So let's keep a good eye on ears. Keep it on your watch list, your top 20. Because this thing can move up and down, and that's what I like about it. And Vegas and I have been watching. We've been following this for for a couple months at least. Oh, yes. And we've, we've made good money on this before. Yes, so. we have. I mean, uh, this is back on my watch. I don't have a position in it yet. I just want to see how, you know, I have some other ones on the go, but definitely be watching this one uh, to see how it performs uh, come Friday. Well, you so. called this one here at $2 when it had that last run, and you were three cents off of that $2. Oh. So it's got your attention again. So it's, it's always it's out. Price now. Yeah, I always say, wait. Don't jump in these things and chase them. Wait for a pullback, and then you'll get your chance. Exactly. And it's running after hours. I mean, it's at seventy-seven cents right now, so it's still moving up. So this news was good for it. It's excited the the traders. You know, well, the block trades are big right now. I'm watching the tape on level two. Yes. And we got seeing some nice buys on the tape, right? Yeah, oh yeah, on, on, on the tape. And then, yeah, this is impressive. So we're going to be watching this come Friday morning. And that's it. Ears. All right. In well, Vegas. you know what, guys? I just want to say to everyone, thank you so much for subscribing and liking. And especially for, you know, uh, commenting and visiting us in the chat room. We appreciate it. We love connecting with our followers. Please share the video. I'm hearing that we're helping people, and that's really what we want to do, and that's really all we care about. So thank you so much. I wish all of you a phenomenal Thanksgiving with your loved ones, your family, your friends. If you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, then I wish you a wonderful day off and enjoy your time. And uh, Jim and I will be back on it on um, Sunday with our report because we don't normally do one on Fridays because uh, we have to refresh your memory on Monday to be ready for Monday. So hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, I will definitely look forward to speaking to you all on Sunday. Jim, anything yep. to add? Well, I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And and Vegas and I have been trading together for a year and a few months, maybe a little bit longer than that. So we, we're gelling pretty good together. And I want you to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the, the like and also Ring that bell so we, you can get our future updates, our future videos that come out, and you'll get updated on them. And all my followers on my other YouTube channel, will you please follow this channel? This is I Love Stocks channel, and that'll be okay. And I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, November the 21st. And actually, we're closing right at my favorite employee number. 401 so and that's 501 east 501 standard. eastern time <laughs> i live in the midwest all right. all right so i wish everybody a great day i love stocks i love stocks too and i love everybody have a great night see you sunday